The legend of Carol Shelby and the Shelby Cobra are forever etched in history, in motorsports, and in the hearts of automotive enthusiasts. But as we look at this one today, you have to wonder what would Carol and his Venice Beach misfits have done had they had Godzilla on their side. <laughs> it's so dramatic. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA, and here I am back at my friend's Superformance Hillbank on the West Coast location with my pal Ethan. At this point, we're starting to go back a little further. We got, we got some years under us now, you know? Got some notches in the belt. Right? We're always looking for cars to shoot, right? It's part of our gig is we always have to find cars. And it's gotten to the point where I don't think about Superformance anymore, not because I don't love the brand and the vehicles produced, but because we've shot so many. The idea of doing another Cobra. It's gotta be something new. I love the car. But then what this one is, now I understand why, like once Kyle gave me a little breakdown of it, I was like, oh yeah, I'm all in on this. Walk me through what do you think brought us down here today? <laughs> I think the front splitter brought us down in the first place, but I believe What's under the hood is really what brought you down here. It's pretty much that. What is it, 65? 65, 427 Cobra. Mark II. Mark, Mark III. Mark III. Our 30th anniversary, we're doing a, co a cooperation with Shelby and Superformance, where this is the Superformance frame, the modern, more refined frame with you know, the handling and the brakes in a CSX. So here, I'm gonna differentiate quickly for any of you guys that don't know exactly what Ethan's talking about, because you're so deep in here. There's the CSX cars, which are licensed Shelby cars, which is reproducing the Shelby car as car. it was. The framework, the suspension, everything's reproducing the car as it was, continuation car. The Superformance version of it, you add some performance upgrades, number one, mainly in the frame. More modern frame, box frame instead of a round tube frame. The brakes right. are power brake boosted. Unlike the originals, which were, you know, you need to push pretty hard on your Yeah, place. yeah, yeah. So this car, because it's the 30th anniversary of Superformance, is a combination and in partnership with Shelby in that it's a CSX car, but it has the Superformance chassis. That's the big difference. Correct. Versus other CSX cars. It's still in the registry, but it's the modern frame. Yeah, very cool. Especially when you consider what's under here. Now, I've not seen it yet, but I do know what's under here. Now, before we show this, actually, because I think it's important to get a gauge on, yeah, the car looks pretty light. I wonder how much that car weighs. How much does this car weigh? 2485. 2485 before you and I get in it, but it's, yeah. so we'll call it 2,500 pounds. Right. Right, so 400 horsepower in this car, nice. you're getting after it. Yeah. You're having fun. That's a great number for this car. This car doesn't have 400 horsepower. It's just so stupid. It's horseshoed in there. This is the Godzilla motor. This is the, I mean, I, do you know how easy it is to know what's here? It says it right in front of my face. <laughs> so 7.3, what does that make it in cubic inches? 445 so, cubic inch. 445 cubic inches in a 2,500 pound car. Yep, sounds about right. Man, I love the ITB setup on here still though. That's bitching, yeah, that's, but it's fuel injected. Fuel so injected, it's, Innovate is the, is the fuel injection. They're uh, Indy Power products. And then it's just that simple old push rod Shelby. Motor. I just love these cars when you always go back into the history of what it was and how this was the beginning of the legend of Shelby. I wonder what he would say if he could see this motor in this. Dude, he'd be so fired up. Just the idea of like, cause he was all about going as fast as you could, right? I mean, that, this gave birth to the Daytona Coupe, same chassis, right? It was like, we need to go faster. This will give you more horsepower and not enough traction. So what's the, yeah, well, you got that short little wheelbase there. Are, I mean, I've driven them, dude. Those, e even 500 horsepower in this car, we were just talking about it, it'll get away from you. It'll break away easily. Yeah, but what does this make, you said? 600. So stupid. My guess is you could probably tune it and even get more out of it if Absolutely. you want. Absolutely, I mean, these can be much higher. Yeah. Um, but you wouldn't, wouldn't need to. Why? Yeah. yeah, why? So this is the, 
As far as the body setup that I like best from the Cobras is I like your guys' addition of the it's splitter up the front. Arm. Their arm model has the But front. I like how you don't have any of the, the strakes, the strakes have, on the yeah. side. I don't mind the diffuser. I think the diffuser's cool because it goes well with the front spoiler. And I also like, I mean, one thing we haven't even tapped onto is the other part of what attracted us to come down here was this car matches perfectly with Chris's vicious Mustang. Gonna have to do a shoot with them next to each other. I mean, how about driving these two down yeah. the road together? It's like, it's, um, holy cow, dude. Two peas in a pot. Seriously. Yeah. What a bitchin' color setup they did on this car, man. Carbon flash black for the black. Mm -hmm. And Sterling Marlin Crystal for the silver. Sounds like a football player. Sterling Marlin what? Well, that's a Crystal. race car driver right Sterling there. Sterling Marlin Crystal. <laughs> and this is an interesting addition. So they redesigned and engineered for the helmet diffuser. Now, I mean, you, since you drive like a pussy, I don't think you're gonna get up to it over 180 miles an hour. I mean, seriously? Over 180 miles an hour, that's to keep your helmet from moving around. I get it, I get it. But yeah. They also notched into the trunk and engineered this to be able to not leak and oh, open yeah, the trunk yeah, still. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's so there's cool. There's a notch there. And you didn't really lose any trunk space, huh? No, not at all. Because somebody needs to go 180 plus miles an hour in a car that has no lid on uh, it. Maybe Dave will do it. I just love these. It's such a, they're so timeless, dude. And really slick bitchin' interior, man. Yeah, so it pays homage to the GT40 with the seats, the Alcantara with dash. With the rings in the seats like that, uh-huh. Got a custom shifter, custom carbon fiber steering wheel. Oh, yeah. Speed hut gauges. Wow. Obviously, your push button start. That yeah, makes you happy, I'm sure. I don't mind a key. It still has a key. But I do like the push button, man, yeah. And I love that although they altered this, that they kept the shape you have to keep of that arm. Yeah, the forward shift. It'd be so weird if it was. I mean, you'd be reaching back here to yeah, shift. Yeah, I mean, feeling extra special. I remember the first time driving one of the Cobras with the arm. You look down, and it looks so awkward. You sit in the car instantly. It's a little awkward at first. That whole you kind of turn to your it takes left. Some getting used to it for for a couple seconds. It yeah. does, you know. But then all the shifter all of a sudden makes sense because ergonomically, it's right where you want. The other thing that shell I haven't even driven this one, but I'm assuming it's the typical Shelby pedals, which is how the top of the brake pedal moves with the movement of your foot, so it's easier to access and not miss it. Yeah, well, which I love that. Me with my big feet. I'm very used to it now, but yeah, it's tight. So the difference is from this to just hit it again, I mean, obviously the engine, right? But the still Tremec, five speed? Still TKX, Tremec, five speed. Yeah, but then, so the differences on this car would be obviously the splitter up front, the engine. One of the big ones, probably as big as the engine itself, is that it's a licensed CSX car, yet it's on a super performance chassis. It's what very I, unique and, you know, that's never been done before. Yeah. So. And then this as well. I've not diffuser. seen this before. Yeah. You've seen yeah. that on Ted Taramina's car, the 223 mile an hour Cobra that Ted Taramina drove at the Sun Valley Idaho Tour de Force. The Italian, the Italian job. Unbelievable. And then I got to imagine, which we'll hear soon, out of the glorious side pipes, you still get that all Shelby sound, huh? It's a great radio. Yeah, I'll bet. By the way, you guys, we picked a perfect day in Southern California to go drive. It's about 55 degrees out here, which I know it doesn't sound like much, but that's pretty, it's banking, it's getting close to Arctic temperatures for us, right? Yeah, I think you need to layer up. I, I know have, you get cold. I have thermals on under here, man. <laughs> and on top of that, we've had little drizzly drizzles, although it looks like we're clearing up. So we are gonna go for a drive. Let's do this. Guys, favorite part, drive time. Every one of these, you know it's funny, I know you know this, dude. Superformance Cobra is a Superformance Cobra. They're all a little different. Each has its own character. I noticed sure. they're all a little different, certainly sound-wise. This Godzilla engine is a noticeably different sound. It seems smoother to me than like the small block 427s. Yeah, and you're the first one to drive this basically, so. Woohoo! You guys, I gotta be honest, I was so excited to go for a drive. 
Boy, I think the last time I drove a Cobra was with Denny out in uh, in North Carolina. Yeah, the Illuminator. So I was a bit overly excited, and we left stuff out of the interview. Like, yes, yeah, so we got uh, 18s with 335, 30s in the rear, and 275, 35s in the front. And didn't you say something about this wheel? It's a it's a one-off wheel for this car? Yeah, for this car they did. It's a Halibrand style. We only did this for this car. And when you say for this car, is it for this one or is it for the 30th anniversary? Well, for the 30th anniversary, um, once it's past the 30 builds, then people can change the color. Because this is only going to be two color schemes for the 30th. It's either silver with the black stripe and red pin, or the opposite like this, which is you know, similar to Vicious, which is cool. Right, totally. After that, people will be able to change and choose their own Got colors, it. change the wheel. But as far as the wheels that are on this car are only on the 30 cars then? I haven't heard if they're gonna continue making this wheel beyond the 30. Got it. I assume it's probably only for the 30. Just so, so there's total clarity for you guys too, so you understand, this is the second car made of the 30th anniversary. They're only doing 30 of this car and that's it. So there's 17 sold so far, correct? So there's yeah, only so 13 left of this 30th anniversary car. 13 slots available and then it won't be the 30th anniversary anymore, but we, do, but we will build the 10,000 series beyond yeah. that. And then suspension on this car is the same as what you guys traditionally do, right? There's no difference there. Same as the Mark III, you know, the coilover, dual, fully adjustable Bilsteins, yep. unequal length control arms. It's got the Super 8 rear and the Willwood, you know, four piston standard. Right. You can do the six piston, but it's really not necessary. Kind of overkill for this car it, since it'll it's put such you a in light the car. Yeah, yeah. The little funny oddities about Cobras to me that I, to me are just charming as hell at this point is you sit down the seats not forward the seats turn slight left or on your side slight right to account for the massive trans tunnel right the pedals are all over there as well and I remember the first time I sat down everything felt weird then you look at this odd shifter like angled way forward but it's ergonomically but, correct when you drive it but it just all adds up pipes are always distinct they're always a little different too like the the little different tones they are still has that one certain tone that you can tell yeah i gotta say i uh let's see yeah it sounds great my first thought hearing it in the shop was too quiet too quiet i like the small block 427 better now that I'm in here, I'm like, this is pretty rad. I'm, I'm kind of digging this. Yeah, it's cool to hear it in the RPM because I hadn't heard it yet. It feels super, super, super linear across the power band, you know? Yeah, I'd say low end and high end. It's going to be all the way through. But I tell you what, though, it's a it's a funny one to try to heel toe. You know, you get look at how far over I got to turn my leg to be because the accelerator sticks up. I need some bigger feet. Yeah. A lot of times I'll have my foot on the brake and I'll use the side of my foot right there, just click it over. That's what I was bit. just trying to do, but the brake pedal, the the what I'm talking about, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about, the brake pedal's further, the accelerator's oh, sticking yeah. out a little further. I mean, I'm sure it's like any car you drive, it's just you adjust to it, you know? Boy, I just love those little pops though. They can put a spacer there for you short guys. The hell are you talking about? Come on, I'm 5'11", I ain't that short. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, good, good pops on the throttle well, lounge. I always love to do the, the movement you get on the brake and clutch pedal. These are just so thought through to make them driver cars. They're built to be driven and that's what we do. Yeah. This color combo, I can't get over it. I really, really dig this. So reminiscent of Vicious Mustang. Yeah, I can tell why. That would have been so fun to have the two together for this cool. shoot. Woo-hoo! <laughs> <laughs> you 
guys watch and more most of you love American V8s like like we do. It's just funny, the dumbest little things like that. Like all I'm doing is slowing down. Pop pop. You're like ah, ah, ah. any like, tunnel we ever find, you know what we gotta do. Just so good, man. Boy, I'm so glad you guys if yeah, I'm wearing a different shirt today. We uh, change. So when we when we shot the other day with Ethan <laughs> for the interview portion. We're getting ready to drive. We're looking at the radar. You know, it only rains like four days out of the year in Southern California. Leave it to us to catch one of those four days. I'm wearing the stop. same clothes. I haven't washed them. I am wearing the same <laughs> underwear. I just I, I I kept those on, but um, I actually dog. I was planning on wearing my same Autotopia sw uh, hoodie, and I spilled Mexican food all over myself the other day <laughs> when I got home wearing it after the shoot. Of course you did. Part of that was because we went to Dave's yeah, afterwards tequila. and drank tequila. You know. But... The other thing I love, man, the charm of it. Everything's manual. Now, is this a, I forget, is this a boosted brake on this car or no? It's power boosted, yeah. It is, okay. It's like yeah. a Mark III. Same chassis as the Mark III. Got it. Which is really unique to have this in a CSX. It is that, that you get the Superformance chassis, but that it's still a registered Shelby car. I'm sure there's purists out there who will It'll not agree, up. but yeah, it's made to it's made to handle really well. And, and oh man, I mean, obviously I'm cruising. You know, it's, it's beautiful. This out. car is sold, right? This car is this sold. Is going to somebody. The owner's gonna be watching this. Thank you for allowing us to shoot and drive your car today. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, we know Sean is respectful. And Dave That's can right. say how he drives. Dave always refers to me as driving like a pussy. What's crazy is we're not even getting into it. When this guy gets this car and gets into it, this is a monster. Nah, what was I, 4,500? 3,800, yeah. This thing probably what redline 65 ish. Yeah, each hundred pulls harder.
you know, it's real. You can touch it, you can feel it, you can see it, you can hear it. It's real, but it's more of the question is, is it original? And you don't have a question of that with this. Yes, it's a continuation car, or yes, it's a licensed replica. And it's real, but it's not original. And you won't yeah, be you're right. And for me to say, I, I, you know, I definitely, thanks for correcting me, dude, because I misused the word saying real. Of course it's a real friggin' car. Give me a break. <laughs> it's why I like the splitter, the diffuser. I like the elements of this because I'm not driving an original million plus dollar vehicle. I wouldn't want to be asked that, like, because I got to imagine, like, anytime you pulled into a 7-Eleven or some grocery store, you're probably going to get asked that. Whoa, is that a real one? And I guess now I'm going to say, yeah, it's very real, dude. Yeah, exactly. That's a real 600 horsepower <laughs> licensed Shelby Cobra right there. Don't touch it. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you've got a sweet ride there. Don't touch it. I swear, dude, I really have to have one of these at some point here. There you go, I, falling in love with another person's car again. Every time with these <laughs> Cobras, dude, they get me every time. Those pops, just nothing about it that ever gets old. Nothing about how this plants through the turns either. Boy, it's really nice, isn't it? So funny, even if you're not going fast, this car just sounds like you're hauling balls. They cruise really nice and you can go as fast as you want, but either yeah. way, you feel like you're going fast. You do. It's part of what I like so much about this old analog world of car, modern cars, with all the with all the suspension and brake and all the assists that happen. You know, you gotta really go fast to know you're going fast. Yeah, it makes it too easy. This, you're barely going fast. You're like, yeah, this is fun, I'm good, I'm enjoying this. Well, this car really, dude, at a cruising pace, I mean, I'm at three grand in fourth gear. Don't even need fifth. It's 60 miles an hour.
fun, dude. It's like a natural thing. It just makes me scream. <laughs> and in a really weird way, Whoa, too. Handy. That doesn't even sound like a scream I would normally ever do. <laughs> this thing's like affecting me in weird ways. <laughs> love coming to Superformance. I always love shooting their cars, the GT40s, the Daytona Coupes, but by far, hands down, my favorite are the Cobras. By far, this is my new favorite Cobra. I absolutely love this 30th anniversary car, the color combo, the way it drives, the way it sounds, everything. I'm so bummed. I am open to donations, please. Donations to Sean's owning a Cobra. Send it this way because I need to drive this car a lot more. Big thanks for hanging and watching. I'll see you in the next one, man. Later.